Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, upon extremely popular request, today finally we're gonna watch The Meaning of Life in Islam by the people of Islam. I'm really not exaggerating when I say that every single day I've been getting requests for this particular video. So with no further ado, let's have a look. That is a big, big question, man. The meaning of life. At some point in life, we will all ask the big life questions. Exactly. Why am I here? Where am I going? What is my purpose? Sometimes by looking around, I believe that not everybody will ask those questions. Islam provides clear and concise answers. Allah asks us in the Quran, did you really think that we had created you without any purpose? This video aims to show you the meaning of life from an Islamic perspective. Allah tells us why we are here in a simple but profound verse in the Quran. He to said worship him. that the only reason we were created was to worship him. This might sound very egocentrical to many people. Oh, a God that only wants to be worshipped. Ultimately, the way that I personally see it, God doesn't need your worship. The worship is for you. The human experience itself does not function without the worship of a higher power. If you don't have God within your life, you will worship something. It could be your job. It could be fame. It could be women. It could be cars. It could be whatever. It could be your health even. I wasn't there health scene and I saw how people got obsessed with health in very very negative ways and they started to worship food worship exercise and what not therefore when God says I created you to worship me you have to see it from a different angle as well it's not that God needs your worship God is absolutely free of need of course you need the worship you need to have God on top of your priority list See, when we think of worship, we think of praying. But actually, worship in Islam is far deeper than that. Anything we love the most, or obey the most, or rely upon the most, is an act of worship. I absolutely agree. This means that every single one of us is worshipping something, or someone, at any time. Guaranteed. For example, some people love money more than anything that their purpose becomes gathering and collecting as much as they can. Exactly. This love for money is an act of worship. Yep. Some people rely on the approval of others to the point where the number of likes they get on Instagram affects their mood and behavior. 100%. This reliance and dependence on others is an act of worship. And amazingly, this is why Allah says, have you seen the one who takes his own desires as his God? This is a passage of the Quran that resonated with me truly, especially coming from a Christian background, because within the Bible we find similar passages to this as well. Jesus speaks in parables and he tells the story of the slave that has one master. But he says that the slave is better off than the rich man that has so many desires and all of those desires become his masters. So every single desire is a master for you, i.e. a God for for you that you then worship and with that logic the slave is much freer of course because he only has one master when fulfilling our desires becomes our purpose we have worshipped our own selves arguably this is the biggest god of today 
We live in a time where we do what we want. And this is exactly what the first commandment is. You shall have no gods before me. But you make yourself into God. You make your desires into God. Do you understand? This is idolatry. People really believe that only worshipping idols and statues is idolatry. But this is so simplistic. This is such a one-dimensional thinking. Of course, it goes way, way further than this. When you worship your desires, you forget about God and you focus your attention onto something entirely, making it your God once again. This is the true idolatry. Strive to be who we want. If this was what life was all about, why are the richest people the emptiest? Why are celebrities taking their own lives? Why are so many people still unhappy? Yeah, I don't think we can generalize here. Of course, you have plenty of rich people that are miserable, but you, of course, have as well poor people that are miserable. Ultimately, it comes down to the connection to God. It comes down to the connection to a higher purpose. The answer can be found in the Quran, where Allah tells us that the enjoyment of this life is the enjoyment of delusion. I love this. Chasing our desires and the material of this world is a drunk type of enjoyment. True fulfillment comes from directing all acts of worship to the creator, not creation. I agree. Love the creator, not the creation. 100%. Part of directing all acts of worship to the Creator means fulfilling the purpose that He created us for. Like with anything created, the Creator is the one who decides the purpose of His creation. And Allah tells us that He created life and death to test which of us are best in deeds. Yes, I do agree with this. Plenty of Christians, unfortunately, adopted the doctrine of faith alone, that we do not need any good deeds any longer. But this is, of course, self-contradicting, because after all, as a Christian, you want to do good. So why do you do good at all if you do not have to? Ultimately, it is very, very similar to atheist logic as well. Hey, there are no morals, there is no good and evil, but why do you then try to be good all the time? As an atheist, you can run around, kill and rape everybody. So there is no logic in that either. And the same applies, of course, to the argument of faith alone. If we should have only faith alone, then the worst of all humans can go straight to paradise if he believes in Jesus. That doesn't make sense. The test is to see how we live our lives in times of ease and times of difficulty. Sure. Will we resort to that which is good? Or will we resort to that which is bad? Since we all perceive what is good. The Bible itself states as well that it is a battle between good and evil, ultimately spiritual warfare. We are battling it on a daily basis, decisions for good or evil. And we all understand that concept. It doesn't matter which religion, it doesn't matter if you're an atheist, which is a religion as well, of course, an inverted one, but nevertheless a religion. Every single human being believes in good and evil why is that so and bad differently we cannot decide the standard which is why allah has assured us that Fair. the quran is the standard that clearly distinguishes between what is right and what is wrong what you'll find is that islam does in fact cover all bases it has answers to every life question and leaves nothing out on how we should live our lives The biggest indicator that life is a test is that no one has the perfect life. Allah has created us with different strengths and different weaknesses. Some people may have wealth and beauty, but also be insecure. Some may be intelligent and confident, but also struggle with health problems. You cannot have it all. In Islam, what we have doesn't matter. What matters is what we do with what we have. 
Yes, yet again, I absolutely agree with this because equality is a lie. Of course, modern day liberalism tries to push equality. We are all equal. And this is why men can compete with women in women's sport because we're exactly equal. Out of a sudden, biology doesn't matter at all. And the same, of course, ripples throughout society. We are all the same. Doesn't matter if you're Asian, if you're Caucasian, if you're black. It is all the same. Guys, it is true that we're all humans, but nevertheless, we have differences, and that is beautiful. I will never be a Michael Jordan. This is not my genetic. And that is great, because like this, we can look at a Michael Jordan and see it as something special. We are not created equal. We are not the same size. We are not of the same intelligence. We have so many differences, and that is absolutely beautiful. It is essentially like a poker table. Everybody gets dealt a certain card deck, and now you have to play with it. Maybe you're going to win, maybe you're going to lose, but it still depends on your skill set. The greatest enemy here is, yet again, of course, the ego that will complain then of how unjust everything is. Oh, how unfair that I am like this and he is like this. That is the biggest problem here, of course. Ultimately, you will have to realize what you've been given, and that is a absolute gift. So take it as a gift and play with your cards. How we use our strengths and weaknesses is what makes us superior in the eyes of Allah. That makes sense. It doesn't matter what color you are, what gender you are, or what status you have. Superiority comes from your piety and your good action. Fair. As you can see, just like we have moral obligations, we also have religious ones too. Only until we do both do we fulfill our true purpose. Only until we fulfill our true purpose does Allah fill every heart with what it's searching for? And that is peace. Absolutely. Fulfilling our purpose isn't just to find peace and fulfillment in this life, but also to prepare for what's to come after. Without any judgement after we die, there is no justice. Otherwise, what real difference is there between a corrupt leader with money and power, and children literally dying of starvation? This is why Allah asks us if we really think that the evil will be made equal to the righteous. For ultimate justice to be served, there must be something after we die. Which is why Allah promises to bring us back to life where we will all be judged on how we lived our lives. The way that I understand God is that God sees everything. This is of course not a novel concept. God sees everything and penetrates everything. His understanding, his knowledge, everything is in direct observance by God himself. Every little raindrop that falls, everything that happens underwater, above water in this entire universe, I believe that God must monitors everything. To speak in modern terms, like an artificial intelligence that can monitor every single atom. There were movies made like this, but I believe that God is that exactly. We humans, we are obsessed with surveillance cameras and surveillance technology in general, but God sees everything inside and out. He sees your thoughts as well. This is why Jesus said that if you lusted with your eyes, you already committed a sin, because ultimately that sin happened within 
your own mind, your thoughts themselves were sinful already. And this is why I believe that God's law is everlasting right now and in the afterlife. Because you even have physical laws that come directly from God. If you jump off a building, you will die. People call it gravity. This is of course a parameter, a physical law, so to speak, put in place by God. There is a direct consequence and a ripple effect into eternity, so to speak. To have ultimate justice, we of course have to have an ultimate judge. Against others and spread corruption, we will be held accountable. If we took care God of willing. ourselves, fulfilled our obligations and made the world a better place for others, we will be rewarded. No injustice will be done to anyone and Allah affirms this by telling us that even an atom's weight of good and an atom's weight of bad will be brought to account. Allah then decides our final destination after which there will be no more death. And that is either punishment in hell or perpetual bliss in paradise. Let me know guys, is hell eternal as well within Islam? I'm not too sure about this. Let me know in the comment section. I believe that it is not forever that you can get out of hell as well. Let me know. Simply just having this belief puts ultimate meaning into our lives. It gives us the best reasons to strive for good whilst also actively avoiding the bad. What better reasons are there than the fulfillment we are all looking for in this life and eternal pleasure in the next? Mm, this is not really something that resonates with me. I'm not doing good for eternal pleasure. I don't want to be eternally pleasured. I do not need it. I personally want to please God. Why? Because God is the ultimate truth. God is truth. So if God is eternally good, then goodness becomes the eternal truth. And this is why I want to do good, not to get eternal pleasure. For that I really couldn't care less. I could even perish afterwards. Considering we all make mistakes, sure. isn't the thought of being held accountable for every action worry? No. This is where the wisdom and mercy of Allah really shows. Firstly, doing more good deeds wipes out bad deeds, giving us more of a reason to strive to do good and to further fulfill our purpose. This has a knock-on effect and makes the world an even better place for everyone else. Secondly, I'm not too sure about this. This could be misunderstood as well, of course. People could say, well, I'm going to do something bad and then I'm going to do two good things and then it's relative again. So for me personally, it needs to be clarified. Evil is evil, so you do not do evil and you only strive for good. The thorn removes bad deeds, meaning any mental or physical pain we go through benefits us on the day of judgment. That makes sense. Again? This allows us to find solace and comfort in the most difficult of times. Sure. This is something that even the Buddha realized. He said that life is suffering. And this is a very important realization, of course, because suffering is the name of the game. People nowadays, they want to escape it all the time. They want to sit on their couch, order Uber Eats and watch Netflix to not suffer. But suffering always comes after you. You will suffer in one way or the other. Maybe you should get your butt up and actually go to the gym and suffer in the gym so you don't suffer the bad health consequences afterwards. Thirdly, why not just ask for Allah's forgiveness?
A religion is a set of rules and beliefs that you live your life by. Yep. If you don't want to be constrained by religion, you will be constrained by something else. Always. Whether it be the rules you create for yourself, or the rules that your friends, your culture, or your society has imposed on you. Considering Allah has told us that he has perfected the religion of Islam for humanity, do we really think that any other rules we follow are going to be more fulfilling, more liberating than those provided by the Creator? This is why the West is afraid of Islam, of course, because true Muslims will follow Islam and they won't follow the Western rule set. Of course, the next question is, how can we be so sure that Islam is from the Creator? I could start by explaining the rational and intellectual foundations of Islam. I could then show you a plethora of reasons why the Qur'an cannot be man-made. I could speak to you about Islamic history and the life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. But since this video is about the meaning of life, I'll take a different approach. Out of the millions of explanations out there for the meaning of life, can you think of just one that is more fulfilling, more complete than the one that Islam provides? Islam doesn't just give the best incentives to make the most out of life, but it also creates an environment for humanity as a whole to thrive. Islam frees us from the worship of that which has no benefit and directs us to Allah, the maximally perfect and the only being worthy of our worship. Islam teaches us that it doesn't... I would go even so far to say that Allah, that God is not a being at all, because then he would be like something within creation. Everything that you see around here, those are beings, be it animals or human beings. And Allah, God, whichever term you want to use, is of course transcendent of that as well. He might be the purest of all beings, he might be being existence himself, but nevertheless he is nothing like this creation, and therefore I wouldn't call him a being. No matter who has the best mix of strengths and weaknesses, what matters is how we use them and how we cope with them. Life being a test instantly explains why we go through difficult times and makes them much easier to manage as these times have wisdom and purpose. Death becomes something to look forward to and not something to be afraid of. And the meaning of life in Islam applies to every single human in the exact same way, no matter who you are or where you're from. Islam is simple, universal, natural, and it just makes sense. So even if Islam wasn't the truth, it would still be the best, most fulfilling way of life to adopt. For that, it is safe to say that being a Muslim means you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video, long enough as it is, absolutely beautifully done and I had a lot to say, this is why I'm gonna cut it off here. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, if you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so, and if you want to support me via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below, thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all, much love and peace.